welcome back to the studio. I have a really great way of doing a binding using your scrapbook paper or jelly prints, whatever you have on hand. You don't have to buy anything for this one. So what I've done is taken four 12 by 12 scrapbook papers and I've cut them and folded them to interlock with each other. This is called a double fold accordion book or binding I guess you could say. And then I've gone and uh, did some sketching, a little bit of watercolor, but I've done it in a way that it is cohesive with the next page. So it goes into the next page by either following a leaf or a limb or a bee or something. So it's all cohesive. It all matches everything. So get your stuff ready or you can just sit back with a coffee and watch uh, how I do this. I will show you the binding first and then we'll decorate. So I thought I would show you this binding. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. There's a couple of them actually. Um, and it's called the double accordion fold. So this, there's no glue, there is no binding of any kind as far as uh, thread or twine or glue. It's all just paper and folds. And it's very easy to do. So this one in particular has this neat little um, triangle thing going in it. But this was double-sided scrapbook paper. So as you can see, it folds into each other. And this is made with uh, one sheet of scrapbook paper, or two sheets actually. And it lays flat. And I can't see why you couldn't uh, make this bigger. And so I thought I'd start off with the binding anyways, and then we could work on a book and we'll decorate the pages. This is just a, a book to show you what it looks like. The other cool thing about this is you can have pockets. Oh, here, we'll just use this. So these, because they're folded in this way, you can actually use these as a pocket. You could actually have this part as a, another flip thing if you wanted to. You could also use these as a pocket. I just thought this was such a cool idea. So you can either use your scrapbook paper or you could get um, something, you don't want something too heavy. So if you got a, hmm, probably a 90 pound watercolor would work. I wouldn't go up past that because you tend to have, um, when you crease them so much, they break. And so I thought we could play with one that I've got the papers already uh, put together. Well, not put together, but cut out here. And all I used was this, pa this paper. So it's this particular one is just um, single sided. So it might give you a little more play. And what I've done is I've taken two sheets, cut it in half, so it worked the same way. So you could just use one area on it, depending on how you want to use this. Are you going to use it for 
uh, journaling on? Are you going to use it as a, um, a junk journal, drawing journal, whatever? So this is how it would typically be. So you get different, a little bit of a different look on each page. And then when we combine them, it's going to be even be more complex looking. So I'll show you what I did here. It's very simple. I couldn't believe how easy it was. <laughs> that might be my famous last words, but... <laughs> So depending on the size you want, uh, whatever size length won't change. The only change will be the size of the width because you have to um, fold it. So each page is, I'll show you what it looks like from the, so see they're all folded. into each other. Um, if you just want to experiment with it, I would suggest just using a uh, sketch paper, a heavy duty sketch paper, and just, or uh, if you've got rolls of um, uh, craft paper, use that. Just cut it to the uh, length depending on how many um, folds you want in your book. So this one's uh, got quite a few. So there's, this can go onto a cover of, a, of the book. So you'd glue this onto the cover. You could glue that too if you wanted to, but so one, two, three, four, five, six, so six doubles, and then your two end pieces. Now, you could make it as thick as you want. It's just a matter of gluing more paper to a long, long, long strip. I was looking at this, and there's so many possibilities of expanding on this that I really thought it would be a cool cool thing to do and make your own books. I've got a few different ones that I'm going to be showing um, not today but through the uh, next couple months. So all you have to do is cut your paper. I did a six inch. Um, you can do it whatever height you want. So if you want to have a tall one, go ahead and cut it that way. So I did two for this particular size um, hook. And I did uh, two different colors. Okay. And then you can glue them together. So what I did is for this one that I'm going to do, I reversed it. And I glued about a quarter of an inch on the ends. So I did a, you can go gray, black, gray, black type of thing if you want or you could do them all on one side if you don't if you um, don't want any white because when you're folding them together only one side will really show like this green that's the other side but you don't see it because it's folded so you don't necessarily have to have two sided same with uh, the, that's the other side of this paper. So you don't necessarily see that. Now another thing you can do with these is you could hole punch 
shapes in here if you wanted to in one side and that way you would see the other side of this and that might look kind of cool of course you'd have to do that before you folded it all together so that these would make really cool little um little i don't know you could probably cut here and have a little um what do you call it a thumb so you can see what you've got so all you have to do is glue your papers together in a long strip whatever height you want we just want a fairly long strip depending on how many or how wide you want this to be depends on how many folds you'll do so if you want a um, a wider book then you'll want to add more strips so instead of 24 inches you may want 48 inches if you want double the width of this so this one here in particular is uh, three inches so what I did I so glued, I have one, two, three, four. I have four sections here. So that was two pieces of paper per section. And each piece of paper was 12 by 12 and I cut it in half. So two 12 by 12s to make one strip for this particular size. And you need two of them. You need two of these strips. So you need to make, so that's a total of uh, four sheets of paper to make this one book. I found it easier to find your center point. So this is a 48 inch piece of paper now that I glued it together. So find your center point, fold it, and then fold in towards your center so your end pieces meet the center first. And then score it where your folds are. Then take your fold here, so from the center, the end piece, fold it back onto itself to the edge. And do that with both sides. And what I do is I turn it over and then I fold it back onto itself again to the center point. And make sure you really um, burnish the edges so it's able to fold nice and easily. And then you just fold it together and you've got your accordion. So it should look like that. So I have my two pieces. You should have two pieces, end pieces, facing the same way. So do that with both the same way. All right, so then find your, um, where the end pieces are single. So these are the mountains here. I want you to have that facing you like so and the same with this one the ones with the mountains so one two three four I want it facing the other one also so the mountains are facing each other so the next thing you'll need is a ruler and a pencil 
and some scissors or you could use an exacto knife too if you have that okay so if you got it lined up so that all your mountains are lined up on one side so anything that's single here has to be on the right side So I want you to take a ruler, whatever um, length your book you've decided. I don't know what size you've decided. Um, this is six inch, so I want to find the center point, which is three inches. And from that, I want to find uh, one inch on both sides of that center point. So measure one inch from the center point. Then from that center point, I want you to measure uh, an inch and a half. To make sure it's uh, lined up properly, you want to make sure it's in the right spot. Then take your ruler and draw a line from that outer mark to the inner mark of the one and a half inch. Like that. And then you can take an exacto knife, scissors, whatever you have. And I'm just going to cut mine. And you want to cut through all of these at once to the center point. You might have, if depending if you've got a lot of signature, or I don't know what you call these mountains. <laughs> um, you might have to do it in a couple goes. So then you just, so there's, so you have that. Then you, the same, you want all the mountains on the right side this time. And you want to face it with the other one. And wherever your outside mark is, mark it on your, opposite page here the new bundle of mountains and then with your ruler from the corner to I already did that no I haven't well I shouldn't play with it I shouldn't experiment while I'm showing you how to do this. <laughs> you know me. Draw a line, and you have to cut through all of these. So I don't know if you have a a pair of scissors or an exacto knife. And just cut through those. You can use these for adding to stuff in the Thing. So it looks like this now. So now what we want to do is just put them together like this. So you take the first page and it's a single and this one is a single and you want to fold up your, pay, your corner and put it through the triangle. Okay. 
and just slide it through. it meets the fold in both papers and then you can let it go. <clears throat> so then you, you move that down. The next mountain or triangle, how am I going to show this? This is um, I'm going to call it a fishtail. <laughs> so you do the same thing. This one's double, and then the hole, the triangle, you put it through. You do the same thing. Push it till it meets that fold, and then let it go. And then you put it over there. Next. Crunch it up, put it through the triangle, let it go. So the, this one that has no cuts in it, except for the other side of the triangle, you only want to put it, well it's the only place you can put it through is the triangles. So again. through, let it go, and it's done. So now we have this. So there's the single, single, Now this one happened to have more gray in it, so I did, uh, most of the blacks weren't put in here. It's mostly gray. Must had the um, all the uh, blacks on a separate page, but that's fine. Now you could actually have put so there is your book. I think it turned out cool. So this, the six inch gives you a little bit more room to do stuff. So you could actually paint on it or um, draw, collage, and these can be, um, you know, any kind of uh, card would fit in there. If you want to make these into a pocket, you could actually just glue the bottom or put washi tape down on the bottom. Um, another thing you can do before you put it together is if you wanted to go in with a sewing machine, you could do that too. I think, it, I think they're a really cool idea. And they lay flat. That's what I like. They lay flat. So then you can also, if you have cardboard or chipboards, some chipboard here from a, I don't know what, some type of, I have these recoll recollections from Michaels. Um, I've had these for years. You could probably still get them. These are probably going to fit, well, maybe a little big, but they'll still work. And I don't necessarily have to use the holes. Now you could, but you don't have to. Or if you wanted to make your own, I know you could probably make your own. Your own. You're very talented that way. <laughs> but 
I've got a ton of these, so why not use them, eh? So we could just glue the back page on. So this page could be glued on like so. And just line it up with the edge of your chipboard. There we go. Jelly Pelly paper. Yeah. That's what I'll do. So just get some glue. I like using a gel instead of a fluid. This is just one of those um, silicone scrapers by what is it? Catalyst. Gives you a little more of a nicer finish. They could be used for anything. You could use any kind of paper. Um, as long as it's not too heavy. I do have some other <laughs> binding methods for more heavier papers. Just thought this was a, something I haven't seen too many people do. A little different. Great for those that don't want to do a bunch of um, sewing or binding with thread. Corners. And then just do the edge here, fold it up over the edge. Just bring it up. So, make sure that's good and flat.
Oh, there it is. All right. I'll just make sure it's good and glued down. So that's one. That could be the back page. Let that dry a bit. And the next one, what do I want? Mm. Just going to put this on. Oh, my other. I want it good and stuck. Yep. Down. So because I'm not um, going to put rings, doesn't need rings, uh, or ties of any sort, because it's already um, got a good bind to it, so it's not going to fly open at all, you don't need to put rings or anything on it. So that's why I'm covering these up. So. stick really well. I suppose you could use a really good glue stick if you wanted to. Um, use what you got. And then fold it over. Oh, wait a minute. Forgot to cut these. I cut the corners, miter the corners before you do this. And I'm just going to cover the top of this some more. Anyways, so 
I'm not too worried about if it's not exact. You can do how you want to do yours. Maybe you want to paint or collage. Okay, that's my front. Actually, goes like that. So this has to be on the edge. So I'm going to put a little bit of patching on there. So I forgot about the triangle. Loop. Center it. A piece of wax paper if you have it. Um, and I'm just going to glue put some glue on here. piece onto my cover. Don't forget. Line it up. Now, I don't want any glue on my paper here, so I'm just going to put this on and smooth it. So Get it all mucked up. There. So that's my front cover. I'm just going to fold it over and put my back cover on.
this is just so that it sits up so that this uh, is the right height otherwise it won't sit right Actually, I could have put that behind. I should have done that. Well, let's try it. Okay. Put those away. So there is our little book. I think it was a cool idea. What do you guys think? Leave some comments. So we can glue, we could draw. It's just a little different, but I think they'll be really cute. Um, and exp oh look at that awesome <laughs> awesome so then we can play and do all kinds of stuff with it now you could actually um, if you want to support the board if it's if um, you find that it needs more support you could also put um, before you put this on you could have put a piece from this board over to here just so that it's a little more secure because um, that's only one little piece in here But I think they're awesome. All right, so let's get started. So to make a cohesive uh, theme book, basically, I like to stick with a minimal color um, palette. So in this one here, I'm doing white, black, and then this greenish, mm, it's kind of an aqua green with a bit of yellow in it. And these are all my own gel gel prints and I guess you could say faux eco printing and you can find the um, videos for those um, eco printing I think believe it's called um, I've got quite a few and you can uh, find those in my uh, playlists or in um, just videos and this so as you can see, mine is going to be themed in a way of nature. Okay, so I'm going, for myself, I am going to do a lot of sketching in this, uh, ink sketching, and very little color. The color 
and the way I sketch is going to be how each page connects with each other. So this branch here, as you can see, it goes across this little opening here, comes around, and then it disappears behind this page. So this gives you the, oh, wonder what's behind there. Where did it go? It gives you interest in turning the page. So when you turn the page, it tells a story. So now we see a bee or a hornet, whatever, it's probably a hornet. And the uh, branch, which is this here, continues from here. And it, this is how the hornet nest was connected to the tree. So this, is, this was actually in my neighbor's yard, but I could see it from my balcony, or not balcony, my deck. So I just wanted to document that for, um, but what I've done here is I've connected it by adding it to this page. So this, so this um, stem here connects to this separate page here. Now I didn't connect this part here to that. As long as you have one thing connecting, one thing that keeps you following to turn the page. Also what you can do is use color to make it all cohesive. So I do have the green on the outside, the black, a little green here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that green color. Now you don't have to uh, do your cover page first. You could actually do all your inside pages and then look at and see what the main color you've used and then add that to the front. So there's different ways of starting this. Um, I kept the background very plain because I knew I was going to draw with black pen. So if you want something a little more colorful, go right ahead. These are all your own experiments with books. And what a great way to um, experiment when you have a ton of paper. I don't know about you guys, but I have a ton of scrapbook paper, and they're perfect for making these books. Now, I could have made it a little longer, a little wider if I wanted to. Um, it's endless. You could also use large sheets of 90-pound uh, watercolor paper or um, marker paper, that type of thing. That would work also. So what I'm going to do with this, because this is the main page here, I want to just um, uh, put a little bit of wording on here too. So I'm actually going to take this branch and bring it down into here. And um, I'm going to make some letter and just put fall here. But I'm going to have the branch coming down in, into the lettering also. So I want to put the lettering on first. And what I think I'm going to do, which kind of funky letters. Uh, there you go. So that's what they'll look like. I don't know what set this is from. I have had these for probably 15, 20 years, so I have no idea where they came from. Um, now I want to match the green. I want. Okay, so now I want to put a line down. So I can line this up. So I'm just going to get a ruler here. And I think I'll have it like so. make sure I don't have any
Okay. It did goof up a little bit there, but that's fine. Okay, so we'll let dry that up. So just give it a little shot with your heat gun. And now I'm going to incorporate this branch coming into this little page here. So this one, this branch here, it also continues here. When you turn it, it's come out here and it's totally different. Now with this one, I've done all I want to do on this one, but I want to continue the, each page to be cohesive with the uh, one before. So what I'm going to do is take this color and put it in the leaves. I have my pencil crayons right here. So again, just get a piece of paper. See if you can match that. That's not bad actually. So we'll use that. And I'm just going to color in some of these leaves. there's how you can get a little bit of color so it's cohesive looking in your page. Okay, so there you have that. Now I could go in maybe and color some of the leaves here, but I think this is enough. Because I don't want it overbearing um, with color. I want more of the focus to be on the drawing than the color. So now this, so as you can see, this goes into that, that goes into this, but we have nothing going into this. So you can either start a new topic but keep the same color and style that you're using. So I wouldn't start doing watercolor. I'm going to stick to this style um, for this particular book. Now if you wanted to you have each section different you could do that. But I want this to start into maybe ferns or um, dragonflies, something that I've seen. I have this stamp of the hydrangea and I think I'm going to stamp that in the black so it looks like it's already, uh, so it kind of looks drawn. And I'm going to place it 
You don't want to place it in there because this spot here will show up here. So you have to think about those things too. And I want an archival. No, I don't have a big enough um, thing for it. So I'm going to have to kind of wing it. And I want it on the page. As long as it looks like you've drawn it, that's fine. Yep. So that'll work out really nice. So I can either um, write in here about the hydrangea and then over here we want we want to incorporate it so either the writing could be part of the um, wanting to flip a page so say you were doing hydrangea and then you couldn't see the rest of that wording here because it's covered if you turn the page you'll see it. So with the hydrangea um, we could actually put bees because there's lots of bees and stuff around here. Let's see what this bee looks like. Anyways, I'm, I don't think I've even used it. You could draw them, you could paint them. Yeah, we'll use him so we can make him around here we could have him also coming out of this thing and that would be fine because it would show up in here so let's do that so we could actually right there hopefully yep maybe another one down on here I always like to do an odd number. Say one there. And me up here. Okay. So that B is incorporated into the next page. So what do we do here? We can also use these as areas to do your journaling. Uh, with this book, which is kind of cool, it also could be a pocket because these pages are, are overlap they can be pockets which I think is <laughs> pretty neat um, let's see so I like to look at both sides and see what what else I should should be doing so it's incorporating into each other so I'm just going to do the top part if you want to draw them go ahead and draw them too um, this is just something I have I may as well use it use what you got so I'm going to put this one 
right there. And then we can take our marker again and anything that didn't come out, just scribble it in. It'll make it look more um, like you did it. Okay, and I think I will put some leaves in here. So if I have they have kind of serrated edges. I'm just they're very um veined. You see the veining in them quite a bit. I'm going to bring a stem with some leaves on the stem. And that is going to bring me to the other page. So, just mark where you're left off. That is going this way. So, up here, where's the Stem veining. And then this here, now I have to decide what I want on here. Now, still see the bees here. Do we want to continue the bees over here? I don't know. This is where I, I think I'm going to have my um, writing on. I could have a picture here too of something. Uh, 
um, keeping in with the theme, I could have, let's see, let's draw these leaves in first. I think I'll just... There. These leaves can be very similar to a lot of different shaped, um, or not shaped, brands of leaves, types of leaves. Uh, this looks very similar to birch, it looks similar to um, beech trees, so you could actually, it's a great leaf, generic leaf to use. So you could actually um, change it up uh, in each section if you wanted to. So it doesn't have to be uh, the leaf of um, hydrangea. It could be a leaf of a birch. I think I'll take that up there. Just to switch it up a little bit. And I could still put um, hydrangea or whatever you want there, or, or even a sediment, like something to do with fall, or just write something. Um, I think I will put... Okay, so what I've thought about is I'm going to continue. I put this wax paper under here, and I've inked up this here, and I'm going to match it up. So I think I want to continue this onto here. So it's not a lot, but I think it'll... it'll um, just match it up a little bit more so it just matches up more so then it gives you the same look but this has the leaves this doesn't have the leaves and I'm just going to remain uh, keep this remainder in here as uh, place to um, journal. So, let's dry that before I turn it. No. And it doesn't have to have everything connecting. Like this here, that doesn't connect. And this doesn't connect. But that's fine. So you don't have to have everything connect. So we'll start to put some color on these now just to bring that green back in. So now we have to decide what we want green. Do you want to stick with the leaves? So do you want that to be the common factor? The leaves are always the green. That could look nice. Or do you want to have a little bit more of a pow effect with this page um, where we have the green um, in the flowers? I think I'm going to do the green in the flowers. I think that would look cool. Uh, I don't want to do it with colored pencil this time. I think I'm going to use watercolor. 
So let's see if we can find a color that would be as close as we can get that olive green that we had. Um, so it looks like this one here have swatches up here. So there's this um, green appetite green or uh, Daniel Smith green appetite gen um, genuine I think it is. which would probably, and I could mix a little bit of yellow in it. Because I want it a little bit on the, it's a very, very pale color of green. So I'm going to get a watercolor brush here, but I want it really watered down. Maybe it's a little bit of leaf green by um, Da Vinci. Just to yellow that up a little bit. So that's more like it. But water down. I don't want a lot of color. So typically you'll see uh, the top. They're not all green. They're kind of... Um, mishmashed. Might be a little deeper in the center. Now this is just scrapbook paper so you're not going to have the same uh, effect that you would get on watercolor paper. So just be aware of that. So I'm just going to do a few on each area. So some might a little darker than others. Some might be still white. They are, some are actually turning brown, but I don't want to bring brown into this. So I'm just going to do a few. Maybe on the top, just on the top of this one here. And then I'm going to turn it and just do the top of these ones also. And I'm not, I'm not uh, getting fussy. I still want it fairly... watercolorly look. So loose. If it goes outside the lines, that's fine. Okay, that's it. So as you can see, it's very simple. So less is sometimes more. So don't get too caught up in putting a lot of different colors together. Sometimes it's nice just to add one or two colors. So I'm not even going to do the leaf in this. Um, I can always come back once I start looking at the whole book in a, as a whole and maybe I'll add 
more writing or a few more leaves or a few more maybe I'll find that I needed bees in it all um, so I think I'm going to leave this I may put a border on here I might decide to actually sew something on here I don't know uh, this is intuitive a lot of the time especially when you're first starting one of these books um, if you're going to make a whole bunch of this particular book in this theme the more you do the more you'll um, add things you'll get your um, it's like anything else the more you practice the better you get and it's the same with building books and making it uh, cohesive so now I want to put something on here. I have the leaf so it is transitioning into this side. Now I could add more leaves here if I wanted to. What am I going to do? This side has a flower on it. Different types of paper. Then here. Um, that's the same paper as this. So what did I do here? Do I want to do the same thing? Do I want to put the big B on there? I don't know. Or maybe I just want a small B here. I could take a branch, bring it across. Maybe it's a vine that turns into, um, these are clematis. So I could end up having a tree branch and then it turns into the flowers here now if I do a tree branch you're gonna see it over here so how is it gonna look with this paper have you you kind of have to think about each section that you do so now I didn't draw the flowers onto this page, but this flower is back here. So this is a whole new section. So that kind of tells me I'm going to leave these flowers alone. I like these flowers, but I think what I'm going to do is keep this as my writing area. I already have a little bit of black pen on there. That's fine. So I'm going to keep this as um, my um, main subject matter. So being that I have a leaf here, how do I want to incorporate it into this whole thing? So I could draw a beech tree here. The bark. Okay, so this is a birch tree. So as you can see, the it's it really peels, and there's many layers, and it's it's really cool to draw. So got the basic form here. I'm going to do it in pen so you can uh, see it a little better. Now I'm going to uh, make this branch. It, I'm just using this picture as a reference for color, texture, that type of thing. I'm not drawing the exact um, picture.
Okay, so let's go back to this and what are we going to do? So we did the green on there, left the leaf. The leaf continues into here. And this continues here. So I think I'm going to just do the leaves on this one. So I'm going to continue using the watercolor that I had just to keep the same colors going. Now, what I think I will do for the end part here is put some bees. I didn't put any bees on there, but I think I would like to put another bee on. So that's where we can, um, I think I'll put one here. A small bee. So we'll bring in the bees again, and then here. necessarily a, a huge amount but maybe one more in here right there will be area where I can write in uh, white ink, which I think will look cool. And we can also um, put something in here. I don't know exactly what yet, but this is uh, something that you don't have to finish all in one go. This is kind of a do a little, um, go back to it, and then see what you got. And that's the back cover. So, here's the start. It's a fall. So we have our leaves. The color is in the leaf here. I could actually put one, maybe this one and this one also might look good. Like that. So we still have our green going through. And then our flower starts. Continues. 
and the vine is what connects the pages. And then you've got lots of room for journaling or doing more sketching, whatever you want. Okay, so there's your book and how to make it interlock and be cohesive with each flip. I hope you enjoyed it. So have a fantastic day and I hope you get um, going in one of these books and maybe different themes. I'd love to see what you come up with. Have a great day, everybody.